Now this market's experienced a remarkable run during the first half of the year, and we're getting into the period where the presidential election dominates the airwaves, can the averages keep running? Now, going back to 1928, the S&P 500 has rallied 75% of the time in election years. That's three out of four. But the average gain is only 7.5%. Now, this makes things tricky because the S&P is currently up more than 16% year to date. And we're doing one of the most candidly insane elections I've ever seen. High-ranking members of the incumbents party keep urging him to drop out of the race after that horrifying debate performance. Meanwhile, the challenger is now a convicted felon, although the sentencing is likely to be a slap on the wrist. Looking at the polling, it's hard to imagine Biden getting reelected. But for all we know, Biden might not even be the Democratic candidate. Maybe we get a contested Democratic convention like Chicago in 1968, in which case I hope we get another Pegasus the Immortal. The domesticated pig nominated by the Youth Industrial Party, only international party, I'm sorry to get that right, only presidential candidate to have been confiscated and possibly barbecued by local law enforcement. Now, I bring this up because there are major differences between the two parties in economic policy. Those differences will affect vast swaths of the stock market, right? So is there any way we can divine the election results from the action in the market? We all know the market's basically a prediction machine, and it tends to be pretty darn accurate, which is why we need to know what it's saying. And that's why we're going off the charts with the help of Larry Williams, legendary technician, market historian, been the best in the business since I was a teenager. He's written over a dozen books and created a ton of proprietary indicators we use all the time. Larry's also made some stunning calls for us in the last few years. He nailed the COVID bottom. He nailed the market-wide bottom late last October. He nailed the pullback in the high-flying tech stocks this spring and the fact that the pullback would come to an end in May. Boom. So what does Williams have to say about the state of the election year, uh, year stock market? All right, first, take a look at the action. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is going back to late last year. Uh, the red line shows the Dow's average performance in years where the president was not reelected, okay? Gerald Ford losing to Jimmy Carter. Uh, Carter losing to Reagan. George H.W. Bush losing to Clinton. And Trump losing to Biden four years ago. You could say that this incumbent uh, loses average ma uh, losses average match the Dow's performance pretty well so far. But Williams says you probably shouldn't read too much going into this picture. See, going back to the 50s, we've had only four election years where the incumbents lost. Tiny sample size. Just not enough to draw much of a conclusion from how but about the uh, election years where the incumbent won. Okay, so let's get this. Now, here we go. Okay, check out the performance of the Dow Jones Industrial Average paired with how the Dow did on average during years when the president got reelected. Again, the pattern seems to fit the action pretty well until midday, where the con connection falls apart. Okay. Uh, although this one has a larger sample size, it's not so much larger in caution. Uh, Williams uh, actually cautions you again not to take this chart too seriously. However, one thing to note is that the fact that the Dow historically tends to perform pretty well going into August during years when the incumbent wins. Let's think about that. That's why Larry prefers to look at how the markets held up during the averages of all election years, where we have lots of data, regardless of who wins. So here we go. So this time, check out uh, the performance of the Dow paired with the average performance in every election year since 1968. When the aggregate of all the election data, uh, when you aggregate it, you can see that the Dow tends to soar starting in the first week of August before pulling back over the course of October until the last week when the market starts rallying again into Election Day. Uh, then, after Election Day, stocks tend to keep running. So, in nearly, get this, nearly the last 60 years, Williams sees two patterns. First, stocks typically do well in August, which is highly unusual. That's a dreadful month. Outside of election years, August can be really terrible. Second, stocks tend to get hit over the course of October before bottoming roughly a week or two ahead of the election, at which point they typically go back into rally mode. So we've got buy opportunity and buy opportunity, and then, of course, uh, buy opportunity, but that's already occurred. Uh, again, regardless of who's winning or losing, don't forget, the stock market craves certainty. And except in some rare situations like 2000, when we had to wait on the Supreme Court, Election Day gives us certainty. As William sees it, these are the two most reliable election year patterns. Let me give you the bottom line. Can the market tell us who's going to win in November? Elections happen so infrequently in this country that the historical patterns don't give us much of a guide to predicting the outcome, especially in an insane year like this one where we're still not entirely sure who the candidates will be. But the charts as interpreted by Larry Williams suggest that the Dow almost always rallies in August. What a takeaway of any given election year. Remember, historically bad month, regardless of who's ahead. And that's exactly the kind of pattern that you can make some money with. Bad money's back at the break.
Coming up with summer in full swing, who feels like a drink? Grab a glass and join Kramer for a look at Constellation Brands next. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.